All right, we're going to talk about the social justice group presentation. Just so you know, um, on the assignment itself, the RL, or anytime you see RL, that stands for remote learning. Um, that's kind of just for me and uh, in the way that I organize things, because um, obviously the way we're going to do this is going to be a lot different um, than what we normally do. Okay, um, so this is the remote learning version of the presentation, uh, which is going to be a lot different, different, drastically different. Okay, um, so uh, first of all, it did say please start by opening the following two documents. So please make sure to open those up if you haven't already. Um, also notice that uh, it indicates what your submission will be. Um, it's going to be a, a shared Google Slides presentation. You have to share it with me and obviously share it with your group members as well. I do want to be able to see the revision history and kind of who contributed what and where. Okay, um, so we're going to start by actually opening up the presentation overview. Um, so let's get to it. So like I said, the social justice presentation is going to be a lot different um, than if we were to be doing this face to face. Um, one big difference is that you're not going to actually present your social justice presentation. Um, so really, you're going to have to wow me in the um, the actual product that you're submitting rather than um, <clears throat> kind of the, the delivery of it, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, so Let's take a look. It says this is where you really sell to your audience. Now again, doing that in person is it would be a lot easier. Okay, um, it should your presentation should include only the vital material from your proposal paper, but it should also communicate a little bit more. Like you need to appeal to emotions and all of that. Um, you need to emphasize, like I said, the emotional aspects of your cause. Get the potential donors to open up their wallets. I know this is a little different because, again, you're not going to actually be presenting it orally or or face to face, so that makes it a little bit trickier. Um, <clears throat> but we'll do our best. Okay. Um, notice here where it says it should include the vital material from your proposal. That's referring to your proposal paper. So again, you don't have to um, reinvent the wheel here. Um, you can take the information that you have in your proposal paper and basically turn that into a presentation and actually that's exactly what I want you to do okay um, there shouldn't be some any major variations from your proposal paper um, in your proposal presentation unless you have some significant issues that you needed to work out between then and, and now okay so let's look at the requirements for this <clears throat> Just like you had four sections in your proposal paper, you are going to have four sections in your presentation um, and they should correspond. So it's the same four sections. You should have an overview section, a mission and philosophy section, an action plan section, and a financial need section. So again, four sections, same as your proposal paper. Each section of the presentation may have no more than three slides max. Okay, so that means in total, your presentation should be no more than 12 slides for the entire presentation. Um, you can add a 13th slide for a title page. Okay, so you should have a title slide plus no more than 12 slides. Okay, um, do you have to have 12 slides? Not necessarily. And in some of the examples that I'm going to show you and I have posted on Canvas, they actually don't have 12 slides and that's okay. All right. I'm saying you have a maximum of 12 slides for the entire presentation. Okay. So again, make sure that those slides only include the most important ideas. All right. So max 12 slides, technically 13 with your title slide. Okay. Okay. Each slide may have no more than three bullet points. Okay, um, so you can't have, you know, a slide that has as many bullet points as I have on my screen here. All right. And each bullet point shall be no more than six words. All right. And that's not a lot. Okay, so that means that your slides should not be in complete sentences. Okay, make sure that you only include the most important words. This technically, you can see, would be to help you not read directly off the slides. In an actual face-to-face -face presentation, you can always turn and glance at your presentation um, as you're speaking to help you keep on track, but you can't just directly read off of your slides, okay? However, <laughs> because you are not actually presenting this orally or face-to-face, -face, you do need to have something written out. Okay, you need to type out a script of what you would say word for word in the presenter notes section of each slide of your presentation. 
okay? Um, so while your slides can have no more than three bullets and six words each bullet point, um, in your presenter notes, I should see complete sentences, word for word script of how you would actually present your information, okay? So that is where you're kind of really selling to me, okay? Um, and although those complete sentences need to be grammatically correct, it should also be in your voicing because realistically, the way that you speak and the way that you kind of, um, I don't know, share information is part of the cell. Okay, it's part of the cell of your, your um, content, okay? So again, how would you, in your words, sell your idea to your audience, okay? Um, and that needs to be, again, in the notes section of, your, of each slide. Every single slide that you have should have um, a script, okay? Um, and you need to make sure that there's enough script there um, to really explain what your slide is talking about and, and your information, okay? Um, if you have two bullet points on your slide, you can still have seven or eight or even nine sentences or ten sentences of information, okay? Because um, again, you want to explain what is kind of given in bare minimum on your slide, okay? But you want to go into detail in your script, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. There should be graphics throughout the presentation that tie in well with the information on the slides and no clip art, okay? Um, for those of you that don't know what clip art is, this would be an example of like clip art, this kind of cheesy um, cartoon image of a dog versus a graphic or a photo um, would be like, you know, a nice clear image um, and, uh, of, of a dog. Okay, now obviously you don't have to have pictures of dogs. I love dogs, um, but if your topic has nothing to do with dogs, then don't include pictures of dogs. Include pictures that make sense and that are relevant to your, to your topic. A really great source um, to find really good graphics that you actually can use without fear of copyright issues, um, there's a website called Unsplash, and I put a link to that on the, the assignment itself. Um, Unsplash is a really cool website that gives you beautiful images. Um, for free and you don't have to worry about copyright issues there, okay? Um, okay, next one. The group must include a two-minute maximum video. I'm serious about that two-minute max thing. Don't give me anything super long that makes the audience care about the issue, okay? I used to make uh, or I usually make the, the groups create their own video and I've had some really awesome ones. Um, but because of social distancing and all that, I'm not going to make you guys get together to create a video. Instead, you can include one from like YouTube or whatever. You might be able to pull straight off of your um, your multimedia page from your website if you had something there. Okay. Um, so again, pull that video uh, from somewhere and um, then decide where that video should be placed in the presentation to be most effective. I don't care where you put that video. It could be in the overview section. It could be in the uh, mission and philosophy section. It could be in the action section. I don't care where you put the video um, as long as it makes sense within the flow of your presentation, okay? So, a couple little notes on the video. It must have meaningful content, okay? So don't just throw up a video there that you think is like, oh, I guess I'll just throw this one in there because I have to include a video. It has to have a purpose, all right? Also, make sure to introduce the video and briefly discuss the significance of its content in the script, okay? Um, so, yeah, that would be in your presenter notes for that slide. And yes, your video slide counts as one of your three slides per section, okay? Your, your video slide is one of your 12 slides, okay? So it's not 12 slides plus a video slide. It is one of your 12 slides, okay? And again, 12 is a max, not a minimum, okay? Um, yeah, so just make sure that you actually talk about the video. Don't just throw a slide of a video on there and expect that I understand everything, okay? You need to introduce the video with, with, within your script, and you need to discuss the significance of it, okay? The presentation itself must be created through Google Slides and shared with me. Um, that's the way you must turn in your presentation. Sorry, you can't see this. And that is how it will be, um, it says that's how it will be projected while you present. Obviously, that was old information. You're not going to actually present it, okay? But that's how I would like to receive it. The good news is once you create your Google Slides document, um, you have submitted it to me. So you don't have to worry about submitting ever again. 
For the rubric, I'm not going to go over a whole lot with you. You can actually take a look at that on your own, but I just want you to be aware that the rubric exists. That's how I will be grading this. Um, so just take a look for the presentation, including the four sections that are needed. Um, that's four points. Um, the slides themselves and kind of what's what you put on the slides and how they look. Notice that layout and organization and visual does count for something. That's worth 12 points. The script is also worth 12 points. Okay, so it needs to be good and take a look at all those um, criteria, uh, or criteria, excuse me. The action plan idea and the financial need, uh, you also get five points for that. So the, the, the idea needs to make sense and needs to be realistic, and your financial need needs to be realistic. And so um, if there were issues with that in your proposal paper, you should definitely revisit that and maybe make some adjustments. And then you get a couple points for having the required video. All in all, that makes 35 points. And there you go. You can take a look at the details of that um, on your own. I did provide um, some sample presentations from previous years. Uh, a couple things you should know about them uh, is number one, um, that they do not have a script attached to them, okay? Because again, they presented theirs in person. And so this one's a really nice one. I like this one because it has to do with technology and I think the logo looks really good. Um, and the whole theme of their presentation works well. Um, so you can kind of scroll through and take a look. You will notice too um, that um, some of the presentations that I gave you are not necessarily in the same order. The four sections are not necessarily in the same order or like they didn't title it the same way. Um, I, I would recommend that you do. However, um, as long as I can tell that you still have those four sections, you'll, you're going to be fine. Okay. Um, so you can take a look. There's, like I said, a couple different examples here. Um, they're really, really great. Okay, um, so now we're just going to head over to um, the, uh, the setup of the Google Slides presentation. I want to go over that briefly and then we'll call it a day. Okay, so lastly, um, you need to make sure that you set up your uh, proposal presentation Google Slides um, and you need to share it with me. So again, that's what you need to do. You need to make sure you do it today. This assignment is easy, like it says. All you have to do is have one person, and again, please don't have multiple persons within your group do this, but one person create the Google Slides that you guys will be working on, and then you're going to share it with me. Remember, my email is kaylee at bcschools.org. Um, some important instructions or things to know. This is all the same as last time, but I want to just make sure that I say it out loud here. Before sharing it with me, title your Google Slides. SJ proposal presentation, period, whatever, group, whatever, and obviously replace the blanks with your period and group number. Um, make sure that you add your group members and that you know how to spell your um, group members' emails properly. Make sure to use the vcschools.org email addresses. Um, remember that my name sometimes comes up as um, my maiden name, so just be aware of that and know that it's okay. It'll still send it to me. Um, and then once you've shared it with me, then you have officially submitted your work even though you haven't even you know done the work for it yet there is no need to submit again once I have the Google Slides I have okay that's it good luck have fun